in the last video, I said we would talk about a real-world case where we can actually exploit the solubility change that happens with activity coefficient changes. In other words, by having other ions dissolved in our solution, we can actually exploit that and get some cool effects from it. Now, a lot of you have probably taken a decent number of biology courses and are aware of the idea of salting in and salting out. So let's talk about exactly what's going on in that process. Now in the last video where we talk about the activity coefficients, you saw that by putting some salt in, we were able to start getting salts to dissolve even better, which was a little counterintuitive, that we can start putting sodium chloride in and get potassium permanganate to dissolve better. You know, that was a little surprising, probably. We were used to thinking of it as, well, we've increased the concentration in our solution. Shouldn't that force things to be less soluble? And it turned out that there was a cooperative effect because you had that full-size charge helping get it into the water or whatever solvent was there. Now let's think about a protein where most of it's going to be nonpolar. And in fact, you can see here that we have myoglobin. Also point at my reference. This is from a biochemistry book that's available online through NCBI, uh, which is one of the NIH bureaus. Now you can see that we've got myoglobin. We've got our amino acids, the hydrophobic ones, so the really nonpolar, are going to be yellow. And you can see that's the bulk of this protein. So this is the external surface. This is the cutaway of the inside. And that's about what we'd expect. All of the nonpolar things are sticking together because they're hydrophobic. Actually, the other way around, they're hydrophobic because they're not sticking to the water. We have all of our polar groups staying out here at the surface where they can interact with the water. And you can see that the charged ones are shown in blue. And then we just have some others in white. So all of our polar stuff is sitting right here at our surface. Now you can picture pretty easily that that means that it's going to be interacting with some things around it. So because of that, we can actually salt things into solution a little uh, at low concentrations of salt, just like we saw a minute ago with our uh, smaller molecules. The thing is that's because we have charges on the surface. But what happens once those charges are busy? Or once the water molecules are too busy to actually bother binding to them? And that's what happens when we start putting enough salt in that the water says, yeah, well, that's all well and good that it's got these little charges, but come on, guys, these are little charges. My big water molecules out here in the solution have bigger partial charges. I would rather be sticking to those. These sites are already pretty occupied anyhow, so forget it, I'm busy. That is effectively the narrative of what's going on with the water molecules. So as I increase the amount of salt that I've put in to my solution, there's no longer going to be a whole lot of interaction with the protein. The salts are now busy interacting with the water because it's just more favorable. And so all these protein molecules just start getting crowded over here to the side. And once you get crowded to the side and you start to aggregate, you tend to precipitate. Hence, salting out. So that's one of the tricks that you can use in proteins. You can separate things out based on how much charge they have. You can picture that if there's very little charge on the surface, it's going to salt out very easily. If it has lots of charges on the surface, it's going to be a little bit harder to salt out. And of course, there's a lot more complication to that. If you've ever done any of that for real, you also kind of like are giggling to yourself probably saying yeah but we know that salting out is a little bit of voodoo you try it and you see when it comes out yeah size has a little something to do with it charges on the surface have something to do with it too but things are more complicated than that absolutely it's a very complicated system i mean we're talking about how well the salts around it are interacting with the water how well the water molecules are no longer interacting with the proteins how well the proteins are interacting with their neighboring protein when they get close together Oh boy, it's enough to make your head spin, and it's enough to make a supercomputer crash. So instead, we just kind of say, we understand the principles that are at play, and we see how they connect to activity coefficients, and why we care a lot about ionic strength, and why we can manipulate ionic strength to get it to do things. But if we're doing something as complicated as protein purification, we're going to try it, we're going to see what happens, we're going to refine our approach until it does what we want, and then we're going to be very, be very proud of ourselves for coming up with a clever way. That's how it actually works when it comes to salting proteins in and salting proteins out. 